Hi all, this is Emma from Plan Inspire Create and today I am going to be wrapping up my first 90 day goals. So throughout December I introduced you to my Just 90 Planner which is my goals planner which helps you make significant progress towards your goals in just a 90 day period and during the last 90 days uh, funnily enough I have been actually working my way through those plans and trying to get those complete and today I want to actually wrap up the 90 days, evaluate everything with you and show you how I got on. There will be a video a day over the next four days showing you how I wrap up for this 90 days and how I'm going to set up for the next 90 days. So if you are interested in setting 90 day goals, you can plan along with me and kickstart moving towards the type of life you want to be living. So without further ado, I'm going to open up the planner and I'm way back here in month three. So this is my third month and... I filled out this monthly planning spread ahead of the month and it included kind of what milestones I would need to reach, what I hope to have achieved, etc. And then I had my weekly plans of what I would be completing over the last four week period. So we are at the end of that now. I can tell you for a fact that I know I haven't achieved everything in these plans because I'm a human being. So I'm going to do an honest reflection on it and I'll show you where we ended up. So the page says, let's reflect. Firstly, a huge congratulations from me for reaching the end of the 90 days. You should take a bit of time to acknowledge your hard work and give yourself a pat on the back. With that done, the final step is to reflect on this whole 90 day period. This will help you learn and develop so that you can make the next 90 days even better. You'll start by reviewing each of your goals before reflecting on the 90 days as a whole. Finally, you'll recheck your life satisfaction scores and evaluate your progress. And then it's a, and then there's a nice quote here that says there is no failure, only success in progress. So if we flick to these spreads, we have a double page spread for each of the goals. So I set myself two goals for this 90 day period and there were a maximum of three you could have set. Now the great thing about this planner being disbound is that you can pull things in and out of it as you need to. So what I'm actually gonna do is flip back to my goals section and I'm gonna pull out the pages where I actually decided on my first goals. So here we have goal one and goal two. And I'm going to slip those off the discs and I'm going to just put them to the side here so that I can compare. So if we go back to month three. Boop, boop, boop. I'm really excited to be doing this, even though I know I haven't done everything. Um, but that's just how life goes. I'm not being hard on myself about it. The questions on this page are, my goal for this 90 days was, so you put your goal up here. When planning, I outlined how I knew I would have achieved this goal. So that we put here. So if we look, for example, my first goal was, I will have my own home that reflects me and my needs. And how will I know I have completed it? I will have moved and be living on my own, check, and it will feel like home to me, check. So um, I've reviewed that statement and then I will put what did I achieve and what were my successes? Is there anything I didn't manage to achieve? What do I think prevented this and how could I avoid this in the future? And then are there any other lessons I can carry forward? So I'm going to do that for my two goals and then I'm going to come back and show you what I wrote. Okay, so my first goal spread I filled in. So my first goal for this 90 days was I will have my own home that reflects me and my needs. So what did I achieve and what were my successes? I wrote, despite a very hectic 90 days, I moved into my own home and I'm happy to say that it does feel like home to me. 
Lots of work has been done around the home to improve it and to help me feel like it's mine. I feel more independent and have access to my things again. I have always had difficulties staying alone, but I have made significant progress in this area. And my home feels like it reflects who I am and the things I enjoy. So to give a bit of background, my stuff had been in storage for about nine months. I'd been living temporarily with my mum and I was itching to get that sense of independence again. Um, And yeah, all the things that come with that. So I have my things back. I've been able to work through the process of kind of unpacking things and making things feel like my own setting up spaces tailored for how I need them and things like that um it was very hectic because I also had surgery major surgery during this 90 day period so to take on a house purchase and move and major surgery and like additional goals that I want to be working towards as well as not really taking much time away from the business it was a huge undertaking so Hence why I'm not giving myself a hard time having not quite completed everything I wanted to um, because I knew that I was really pushing it. Um, I reined it in, but I still knew I was pushing it. So that's what I achieved and I'm super proud of that. And it's really nice to focus on that and notice that this is a bigger box than what I didn't manage to achieve to really encourage you to think about what your successes were because even in goals where you haven't quite met it completely, this one, I feel I have met the outcomes I wanted although I haven't quite finished everything I would like to because my outcomes I always set were I'll have moved, be living on my own and it'll feel like home which, yeah, check. There could have been more achieved and yeah. I'll break down what that is. So is there anything I didn't manage to achieve? I said I didn't finish all of the transformation projects that I wanted to finish. So my goal was split into two projects. The first one was about moving home and the second one was about transforming it into a space that reflected me and my needs. So I didn't quite finish all of the transformation projects I wanted to finish. Plus, now that I've moved in, I've noticed more things that I would like to do. So obviously, having not seen the property for a while, and I think it's always the same when you move in and you see it empty and and things aren't hidden by furniture, etc. You always notice those things. I didn't realise the kitchen was falling apart, so I've also put a new kitchen in in this 90-day period, uh, which I wasn't anticipating. So not really any wonder that some things I haven't got to. Um, the things that I still need to do are uh, finish sorting out my office. I have a chair that I want to recover and then I need to sort out some more stuff in here, give it a home and then decorate the walls. Like the walls are painted, but put things up on the walls. I need to sort out under the stairs, which I can now do because all my kitchen stuff was under the stairs and I need to sort out the airing cupboard and like just box up some stuff and put it in there that's more kind of like longer term storage. So out of the tasks that I set myself, that's all really there is that's left. So it's not a huge deal, a huge amount of stuff. Considering that I ended up having the kitchen added in, then... I really just, yeah, I'm I'm fine with that. These will become just longer term tasks that I'm going to tackle over time uh, when I feel a bit better after my surgery and as and when other people can help me when they're bigger things. Um, obviously, there are more things I've noticed. So you know what it's like when you paint a few rooms and then the rest of them look awful. Um, so there's some painting I'd like to do. Um I'd like to re-carpet the stairs, just odd bits and bobs. The grouting in the bathroom needs redoing because it's a disaster. So yeah, the funds won't allow me to do it all in one go. The time won't allow me to do it all in one go. So they will go on to a kind of long-term projects list that I will just chip away at each month. And that's fine. So what do I think prevented this and how could I avoid it in the future? The house move was delayed by the other party and this had a knock-on effect of both of my projects. Consider leaving more time for things where you are reliant on other people. So yeah, so I planned on moving in in the first month, having my surgery in the second month and transforming in the third month. As it happened, I... Nothing happened on the house move in month one because the people who I was buying off delayed it. Month two... 
I managed to move in and then my surgery was cancelled. So I decided to try and get as much of the transforming and moving done as I could ahead of my surgery. And then month three was kind of out of the equation. So my initial plans for how I was going to set out months one, two and three for all these projects ended up going right out of the window. Um, But I had a big delay on the beginning in getting some of this stuff done. Um, A lot of this stuff done in this goal. It just couldn't get started because I couldn't start transforming a house I didn't have. So, um, yeah, that was tricky. So are there any other lessons I can carry forward? And I've put, things will often take longer than I would like them to in an ideal world. I think that should probably be always, to be honest. I always want to do so much, but I can't do it all. So this is something I know, but that I have to keep reminding myself. I always have so many plans, so many schemes, so many ideas of things I want to do and projects I want to undertake. And I'm just enthusiastic. I don't know what else to say. Like, I just... I love getting stuck into a project and if I'm going to do something, I want to do it properly, which usually means I'm thinking big. Um, And so I do have to scale myself back a bit. So I've just put that there as a reminder to myself that, you know, it's all right. You didn't have to do all these things in this 90 day period. But the fact is you've got most of them done. So well done you. So that's what I've said for goal one. So overall, I'm very happy with that. So goal number two, so if I give you a quick recap on what goal number two was, I have it here. Now I know for a fact this has not happened. So I will generate £600 in profit. This was a business goal. So I'd done a kind of home, family, personal goal and this was my business goal and also linked to finances. So I'll generate £600 in profit. How will I know it's completed? Well, it'll be evidenced in my business accounts. How will it help me move closer to my vision? It will help me move towards my goal of financial independence. What could happen if I don't achieve the goal? Things will be uncertain financially and affect how I live. It will be stressful and have an emotional impact. Which areas of my life could this impact on? I said home and family, professional and financial, emotional, spirituality and values and passion so you know something that big that's going to have such an emotional impact is going to impact on all these different areas I had an idea of some different projects that I could complete but ultimately I focused on two projects which were going through a rebranding of my business and kind of the not rebranding in terms of the um purpose of the business and kind of like what I'm trying to achieve from it because I feel like that's been clear cut but how I communicate that to people what the kind of visual elements of Plan Inspire Create look like and trying to make it more recognizable so that was the first one and then restructuring how I work was the second one so that I can work smarter and try and not spend as much time working on the things I was working on just to free up some more time for new projects but also to create more balance in my life between work and personal. So I knew that I said at the time when I set these projects that they might seem like funny projects for someone whose goal is to make a profit and the reason that I did pick these projects is because this is something that I knew would impact my profits over the longer term. Having a strong brand that people recognise as mine and that they want to keep coming back to and being able to kind of plan and schedule and carry out my work in a more efficient way is going to enable me to focus on those things that are going to generate a profit. However, I probably wouldn't have put those together in hindsight. I would have set myself a different goal in preparation of generating this profit and I think in all honesty that's probably why I didn't achieve it Um, but we'll look at that in more specifics. So before I get into evaluating it too soon I am going to fill out this spread and come back and show you what I wrote. Okay so I've evaluated goal two and again I feel good about it. So my second goal was I will generate £600 in profit. What did I achieve? I got over halfway. It's not great. Could have been worse. Yeah, that is just what it is. And I'll be perfectly honest with you. Um, It's hard starting a new business. It's hard, like 
I haven't taken any loans out for this. I've done it all on my own. So I've done it very slowly, putting, taking what money I've made and putting it back into the business to be able to grow it, buy new materials, new machines, things that I need and and to keep on improving the quality of my products and the things that I can offer. So I knew that it was going to be a slow build. Um, the fact that I'm making a profit at all is you know something that I'm going to congratulate myself for and the way I see it is it's as long as it keeps moving in that right direction that's what we're going to do obviously in terms of my overall vision for financial independence I need to get it to a point where I can draw a wage from the business um, and not be putting it all back in every time but we digress um we're talking about achievements, so let's not get off track. I got over halfway and I said, December was my most successful month to date and I learned a lot during this time. So, so I've just written down here about Vlogmas. So my Etsy shop is only one aspect of my business that makes money. So I have my YouTube channel, which makes a little bit of money from ad revenue. I have my Etsy shop and I have my Patreon, which is my community that support me each month. And in terms of Patreon, I feel like that's still quite in the early stages. I spent the first six months really trying to experiment what kind of rewards worked, what didn't, and kind of hone it a little bit. My YouTube channel did get the most views in December, so that is an achievement, because obviously it does bring in that bit of extra ad revenue, but in terms of because the amount YouTube pays is so low, even though my views were a lot higher, um, the difference in payout was probably about 20 pounds. <laughs> so, so I would say the biggest difference was in my shop. So December was my most successful month to date in the shop and I learned a lot during this time. January and February were much quieter in terms of orders, but I did use some of that time to think about future planning and other things that would help my business to grow. So I didn't just sit and wait around for the orders to come in. I thought, utilise this time when you've got it. Also, I kept my business up and running despite moving house, having major surgery and dealing with mental health difficulties. So in December, around Christmas, as I think a lot of people with mental health difficulties can relate to, it can be a time where things take a major hit. Um, and yeah, I really wasn't feeling good end of December going into January. Um, and I had all the stress of these major life events that, you know, not only did it take me away from my business, but I also had the emotional impact of dealing with them, the ant anticipation of them, and then things kept being cancelled and pushed back. And it was a lot to cope with. So the fact that I did all that despite what was going on I'm chalking up as a big success because yes this is a business goal but things don't happen in isolation like my personal life affects my business life and vice versa and yeah you've got to look at the whole picture so is there anything I didn't manage to achieve? So I've said I didn't meet my profit goal and in January I actually made a small loss <laughs> so yeah, December, good month. January, made a loss. Um, not a big loss, just a small loss. And then February, things picked up again. What do I think prevented this and how could I avoid this in the future? I said, I had to be away from the business a lot. If the business was more established, this would have been easier to manage. So, you know, it's just me. Um, I'm still in the process of really building the business up. So taking any time off is going to take away from that in terms of bringing new customers in. And I said, January to February are also notoriously quiet months. So yeah, if the business was more established, you know, businesses know that that's going to be the case. December up, January down. And I knew that was going to be the case, but it was just, it's harder to factor that in when you don't have the reserves there when the business hasn't been running as long. And then I said, and this is a big one, I think. I had products manufactured for the first time, which meant a big expense up front, but hopefully I'll gain from this over time. Um, the cautiously optimistic, hopefully. I should perhaps be more optimistic there, but 
All the products that I've made to date, I make in-house, and that's always been the case. I've never paid to send anything off to be manufactured. I have invested in materials and machines that are good quality to enable me to produce a high-quality product myself as and when they're needed, so that I'm not buying in lots of stock that may or may not sell, because for a new business, that's just huge risk, and I didn't want to take that risk. I didn't really have the funds to take that risk, so... This is the first time that I've really done that was with my new washi tapes. Washi tapes aren't something that can be manufactured here. Um, they can't even be manufactured in this country. They have to be manufactured abroad. There just isn't, there aren't the factories here to do it. And there's minimum order quantities for that. So I did three designs and I had to get 50 rolls of each. So that was a big expense up front that I've never really had before. And obviously it came off the back of a quiet month. So it wasn't the ideal time. Perhaps in future that needs to be taken into account that I don't want to be ordering in <laughs> new products in January. Um, but there we are. The fact is that I have that stock now and it's not money spent and gone forever because assuming the washi tapes sell, which they are doing good so far. Um, I, and I'll, I'll leave a link below. Um, I should make that money back and some profit off them. So I guess it's a cash flow situation. Are there any other lessons I can carry forward? I said, which I mentioned before, I perhaps should have chosen another goal prior to a profit-based goal around setting myself up for success because I feel like that's what the projects I chose really were. They were setting myself up for success in trying to make a consistent profit in the future and do some of those kind of preparation tasks. And so I think my goal and my projects were a bit at odds in that sense. It will help me generate that profit but the projects probably weren't gonna help me see that increase within this 90 day period. So I need to be mindful of that moving forward. And then what I added on here was, Vlogmas may not be worthwhile next year. So if you know or don't know, Vlogmas is a something which happens on YouTube in December. A lot of creators take part in it and it's usually to create a video a day in the lead up to Christmas throughout the month. Now I decided to do it every other day and that was still a huge undertaking. It takes a lot of time to film and edit and promote and share videos and it actually took me away from the other aspects of my business. So what it meant was I hadn't been working on any new products and I didn't then get any new products out until the end of March. So after this had finished, I believe I didn't put out any new products within this 90 day period and that's not good. I may have done one right at the beginning of December with my Christmas stickers and things or that might have been the end of November, I can't recall, but basically for the majority of the 90 days there was no new products and I would have liked to have seen two if not three in that 90 day period. So that's something I want to be a lot hotter on moving forward is keeping the programme of regular shop updates going. Because Vlogmas took up so much of my time, I then essentially had to start from scratch in the new year. Add on top of that the fact that I had to be away from the business so much because of my moving house and my surgery and recovery and things. It, yeah, it really set me back in terms of my Etsy shop and it, and it is no wonder that the following months were quiet months. I know they're always going to be quieter months, but I didn't have anything new to get people excited about. Um, and so that's definitely a big lesson learned. I need to be better at forward planning, at putting together a plan for the next three to six months, which has things like you need new products out on this date, you need this on this date. And then if I want to take anything extra on like Vlogmas, it needs to fit around that. I'm gonna have to prioritize the things that generate profit for my business because the other things, while I enjoy doing them, they're not necessarily gonna help me to grow. Now don't get me wrong, I think some things do help me to grow as a business that don't immediately bring in income like social media for example I spend a lot of time on social media but I think it's important in terms of interacting with 
the community of people who love planning like I do. Um, it's something that I love just for me, but also it is important as a business to be having those conversations and getting to know your customers and learning what they like. So there's that. But like I said, I, I hoped that Vlogmas would bring in a lot of extra views. And I will say that I did have a jump in views in December. But yeah, like I said, because the ad revenue is so low, the return just wasn't worth the time and effort that I had to spend doing a video every other day. And then what it meant that I couldn't then do in terms of designing new products. So a lot has been learned in the business in the last three months. And I'd say that's an achievement in itself. Um, I think we learn more from our mistakes than our achievements. And so that's why I'm trying to go into this with a positive attitude really and be open about it because maybe you can relate to some of these things in some ways and it might not be something that you thought of or maybe you just relate to the sentiment. Maybe you don't do what I do for a job and your day-to-day -day looks completely different but you can relate to somebody who holds their hands up and says, yeah, I didn't think that one through all the way, did I? And I've learned a big lesson there. So I can feel myself going red as I'm saying that, but we're all human. So yeah, that's where I am with goal two. So all in all, I'm happy and lessons have been learned. So I'm actually gonna leave today's video there. There's two more exercises in this section before I finish wrapping up the 90 days, but I'm gonna come back to those tomorrow because I want these videos to be not too long so that you can dip in and out and just kind of plan along and think about your goals and yeah, do a little bit each day. So when I come back tomorrow, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to look at the 90 days as a whole. So thinking about what my vision was that I set for my life, whether I think I've successfully worked towards that or not and what I've learned from that process. And then the second exercise is looking at my life satisfaction scores. So right back at the beginning, I set myself scores for eight different areas of my life in terms of how happy I felt in those areas. And I made notes about why that was. Tomorrow, before I look at those, I'm going to repeat the exercise and then I'm going to compare the two and see whether I've made improvements or not <laughs> and why that might be. So I really hope you're enjoying seeing how I got on with my goals and just giving my honest take on it and getting ready to set up for the next 90 days. So if you like the video, please consider liking it and subscribing if you're not a subscriber already so that you can watch my future videos and I will see you tomorrow for part two. Bye.